Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. Did you know that God is on the throne? Did you know that his promises to you today, they are true? 1 John 4, 4. Did you know the devil is a liar and that the Bible says that greater is he that's within you? than he that's in this world. Wow. Listen, I'm Pastor Glenn. It's fantastic Faith-Filled Friday. It's time to get in the Word of God that's designed to build us up and give us our inheritance. Joel 20, I'm sorry, Joel 2, 25. The, God said, I will restore unto you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Well, that doesn't apply to me, Pastor Glenn. I've, I don't see any locusts around. I see an occasional one grasshopper during summer. That's about it. Canker worm, caterpillar, palmer worm. I don't know what that stuff is. No, God's telling you he's using those things as a uh, metaphor, so to speak, to tell you that he's going to restore the, the stuff that's been stolen from you, from the devil, by the devil, your, the stuff that you lost because of your stupid decisions that you made and I made, and uh, the stuff that just you desired and went away, okay? So God's restoring that to you. Psalm 34, verse 9 and 10, O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no want to those that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. Yeah, I've been to, to Africa. I've seen the the spare ribs on the lions. They're waiting for the wildebeest to come so they could have some food. But they that seek the Lord shall not want or be in want of any good thing. Amen. Psalm 128 Verse 1 and 2, blessed is everyone that reverences the Lord, that walks in his ways, for you shall eat the labor of your hands, happy shall you be, and it shall be well with you. How's it going today? It shall be well with you, praise God. The AAT translation, I don't know what that is, but I found it uh, in a hard copy years ago when I made these cards. I'm reading from scripture cards. It says, happy and prosperous shall you be. Huh, the Jerusalem Bible, I know what that is. Happiness and prosperity will be yours. So if you reverence the Lord, walk in his ways, you're going to eat the labor of your hands and happy and prosperous you're going to be. Happy and prosperous shall you be. Happiness and prosperity will be yours. All right, on YouTube, I'm uh, teaching on thinking big in small places. And so you got to think big when it seems like everything in the world is against you. Amen. I want you to know that there is a danger of treating what God said, the finished facts that Jesus has already done as a promise. And because a promise is something that you're waiting on to be fulfilled. And we know that God's given us divine and precious promises, but the purpose of the promise is for you to hide it, internalize it, personalize it, use it in prayer, use it in praise, uh, confess it often so that you'll believe it, all right? And once it materializes, it's no longer a promise, it's a finished fact. And a lot of the stuff that the Christians call promises are finished facts that that God said, he said, You're, you shall be blessed above all people. Well, shall means in the future. Let me think of another thing. Uh, that God said that he, he's made you the head and not the tail, that he's commanded the blessing upon you. Stuff like that. So you got to know that. So don't treat what God said as a finished fact, as a promise that you're waiting for God to fulfill. Uh, it's there's two things in the Bible. There's finished facts for you that God's done for you, that Jesus has done for you uh, when he raised up from the dead, when he spoiled principalities and powers, when he went up into heaven and sprinkled his blood there, when he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, when God the Father called him God from Hebrews chapter 1, uh, then it was done. It was finished. So the finished facts are done. They're yours. You just need to act on them. Praise God. And a, a promise is something you're waiting and believing to materialize for you. But we want the finished, done facts of God's word to be understood by us and not forfeited. Okay? It, it's, it's that very issue that makes me know 
that Christians have forfeited what I'm calling the blessing. Proverbs 10, 22, as you know by now, says the blessing of the Lord, it, 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 what is the it? The blessing makes you rich and he adds no sorrow with it. During your life, God's going to give you a lot of blessings, but he's given you the blessing which, which all the blessings come from. He's put something in you like an anointing. Maybe you're anointed to, there's in the Bible, in the book of Corinthians and in Romans, there's a lot, both 12, there, there's a lot of things that people can do. There's, there's an anointing to give. There's an anointing to show hospitality. There's an anointing to be a leader. There's an anointing then for the nine gifts of the Spirit. So there's different types of anointings. For me, I'm anointed to pastor, to teach the Word of God, okay? That's just an anointing. But if I didn't know about it, I could never put it to use. And if you don't know that you're anointed, to, you're kind, you're friendly to people, you love people, you love, love company, maybe hospitality is your thing, it's not my thing, but it's your thing. Maybe teaching's not your thing, but it's my thing. Okay? So all these things work together for the good of the body of Christ. You got to know that. So the, the, the blessing is also a gift given by God. And so I think a lot of Christians, because they don't know about that, they forfeit that gift. You got to understand that if something is promised to you, then you're waiting on the one to make who made the promise to fulfill the promise, right? And there's a lot of promises of God that we're believing for. Me too, okay? That I don't have yet. But God said I could have it, so I'm believing towards it. I'm leaning towards it, right? If it but on the other hand, if it's a done finished fact, that means it's available to you right now. All you got to do is just receive it and put it to work. Jesus said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, when you pray, not when it materializes, when you pray, believe you receive it and you will have it. And so the blessing is not promised to you. It was given to you when you made Jesus the Lord of your life. In 1 Samuel 10, verse 6 and 7, the prophecy was given that the Lord's Spirit will come over you. It will be like you become a completely different person. Do whatever you like to do because God is with you. That the CEB B Bible says. So that was an anointing given to somebody that they could walk in immediately, do what you want to do because the Lord's with you. Okay, that's a common English Bible. In the CEV, it says, do whatever you think's right. God will help you. So if you think that you have an anointing to teach, start teaching. You might start with one person. You might start with a home Bible study. But just do what's in your heart to do, and God's with you. Okay? That's uh, 1 Samuel 10, 6 and 7. We're using somebody else's experience, but God's no respecter of persons. And he's telling us through that verse how it works. Uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord's going to come upon you. Uh, you. You'll start acting like you're a completely different person. Uh, and whatever you li like to do, you do because the Lord's with you. Okay? The NIV, New International Version, which is a lot of churches use today, do whatever your hand finds to do for God is with you. So God's going to start opening doors for that gift, for that desire, for that dream for the blessing to start working, right? Don't look for something outside of you to help you. Look to the blessing that's in you and on you, and God's going to start helping you. Moses uh, Moses was at the, I guess like you might say, the, the end of the rope. He had the Egyptian army coming at him. He had the desert on the sides, and the Red Sea in front of him, he had nowhere to go. He was going to be destroyed. So he goes in the tent 
when nobody's looking. He tells everybody, don't worry, don't worry, everybody. Everything's going to be fine. God's going to, God's for us. He's going to fight our battle for us. If you read about the crossing of the Red Sea, Moses assured everybody that God is going to make a way. And then Moses goes in the tent and like a whiner, falls down and starts crying. Oh God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? God said, get up. You part the Red Sea. You take your staff. You go to the Red Sea and you part it. You read it. God didn't say, I'm going to part it. You part it. Wow. Uh, Peter and John, when they met the, the sick, the lame man, they said, such as we have, give we to, to you. You have something in you. It's a blessing from God. It's the blessing from God. You have power in your words. You can help people. You can make decrees. I decree this person healed in the name of Jesus. I declare money is going to flow into this family in the name of Jesus. They've been giving. They've been tithing. They're helping the poor. They're doing all the right things. They just don't know they're supposed to believe for the increase. I'm going to tell them about the increase. And Father, I say they're blessed. I say money cometh to them in the name of Jesus. Big time. Amen. Praise God. So the blessing is not promised to you. It's given to you like the anointing to part the Red Sea was given to Moses. He's the one that had to walk it out. He's the, he, he was crying to God to do something, and God said, no, I've already done something. I put the blessing on you. You go part the Red Sea. And he did. Get the revelation of the past tenses of God's word. Most of the things we call a promise of God is not a promise at all. It's really not a promise, but it's something that Jesus has already done for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. You've got to know, you've got to believe, understand, comprehend that the blessing is in the proper, put it in the proper tense. It's in the ever continuous present tense. The blessing of the Lord is on my head. It makes me rich. The blessing's not a promise. It's a finished, done deal. Treat it that way and start using the blessing of the Lord that makes you rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Start putting it to work immediately in your own life. Believe for favor. Believe for open doors. Believe for new friendships. Believe for new ideas. God is with you. God is for you. Listen, we're going into the weekend. I speak blessing, increase, power, might, dominion to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please stand with me in prayer and faith and financial support. Even if it's five bucks a month, you'll have skin in the game. And together, we're going to get some benefits. Praise God. Go forth and steamroller the devil in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.